This video is sponsored by bootcamp.com. Check it out for INBDE prep and use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Ryan here and welcome back to our oral medicine series. This video will be about high cholesterol and what that means for dental treatment. So high cholesterol, also known as hyperlipidemia, refers to high levels of lipids circulating in the blood. And you may recall that lipids are one of the four macromolecules or building blocks that make up all living things, those being carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. And lipids are basically fats, but not all fats are bad. In fact, we need lipids like cholesterol and triglycerides for our bodies to function properly. Now, cholesterol is a nutrient for our body in the proper amounts, and we'll talk specific numbers in the next slide. It's the precursor for all the steroid hormones, glucocorticoids like cortisol, mineralocorticoids like aldosterone, and the sex steroids. And every cell requires cholesterol for the integrity of its cell membrane. Triglycerides are converted to phospholipids also for the cell membrane, and its fatty acid constituents can enter the Krebs cycle for energy production. Now these lipids are packaged into spherical particles called lipoproteins for transport through the bloodstream. So let's talk about what those are. So what are lipoproteins? Well, it's just what it sounds like, lipid and protein. So lipoproteins are substances made of protein and fat that carry cholesterol and triglycerides through your bloodstream, and they're classified by their density. So the lipid or fat components are less dense, and the protein components are more dense. So let's start by talking about the HDLs, or high-density lipoproteins. That means that they have relatively less lipid content and more protein content, which is preferable. They also function to transport cholesterol from the peripheral tissues to the liver, where it's processed and eventually expelled from the body. So HDL can help your body get rid of excess cholesterol that it doesn't need, which is great. And there are some different numbers and guidelines floating around out there, so don't worry too much about the specifics, but just as a general guideline, above 50 milligrams per deciliter of blood is an ideal HDL count for most people. Now LDLs, or low-density lipoprotein, means they have generally a higher lipid content and a lower protein content, which is not ideal, and they transport cholesterol to the walls of your arteries, which may lead to a buildup of fatty deposits along the arteries, which you can imagine is not a good thing. So an ideal number for these would be below 130 milligrams per deciliter. So why does this matter? Well, like we just talked about, these lipids can potentially enter the walls of arteries, increasing the risk for heart issues like stroke and heart attack. And the buildup of these fatty deposits on the inner walls of the arteries is known as atherosclerosis. But how exactly do they impact the heart? Well, they do so in two ways. First, the lipid plaques physically constrict the diameter of an artery. You can appreciate that the diameter of the vessel at this location, where the plaque is, is much smaller than the diameter of the artery at that location. And secondly, lipid plaques physically separate endothelial cells from the smooth muscle cells. So nitric oxide, that's not nitrous oxide, it's nitric oxide, which is a natural vasodilator, can no longer reach the smooth muscle cells, which means that vasodilation is being physiologically blocked. So it's basically a double whammy for vasoconstriction, and constricting those vessels will increase pressure on the blood vessels and ultimately the heart, increasing the risk for a cardiac event. Now here's a list of the most popular medication class for high cholesterol called statins all of which end in the word statin. And their mechanism of action is all the same. It's to inhibit the activity of the HMG-CoA reductase enzyme. And HMG-CoA reductase 
is an enzyme responsible for the synthesis of cholesterol in the liver. Note that it has no effect whatsoever on cholesterol attained from the diet, only that which is made by the liver. And the main effect of these drugs is to decrease the serum level of LDL. Because with decreased biosynthesis of cholesterol, the LDL receptors will also be downregulated. Now there's a minor effect in the decrease of serum triglycerides, but again, the main effect here is to lower LDL. There are also other classes of anti-hyperlipidemia drugs, but they're outside of the scope of the exam, so we won't cover them here. Now, what modifications should you make to dental treatment, if any, for these patients? Well, if the patient is taking a statin drug to control their cholesterol, avoid antibiotics and antifungals metabolized by a certain cytochrome that will have some unwanted drug interactions. And these include macrolide antibiotics like erythromycin and clarithromycin, and antifungals like ketoconazole, fluconazole, and itraconazole, because they increase plasma concentration of statin drugs, which may lead to undesirable toxic side effects like muscle myalgia or pain, rhabdomyolysis, muscle breakdown, and even renal acute failure. High cholesterol is linked with a higher risk of cardiovascular disease, like we already mentioned, and because of the associated comorbidities, usually hypertension and or diabetes is in the picture as well, so all of those guidelines should be considered if that's the case. And the same general rule applies if it's a poorly controlled condition, we'd rather defer dental treatment and refer to a medical doctor. But the problem here is we really have no clean indicators like blood pressure, HbA1c, or INR to tell you this information. Because let's be honest, most people don't walk around knowing their HDL and LDL scores. If they do, that's great. But if not, then observe their other health indicators or consult their physician as needed. Now let's talk briefly about oral manifestations of those with high cholesterol. Interestingly enough, there's an increased risk of calcification within the pulp chambers. These can manifest as pulp stones, calcified masses within the pulp tissue, kind of like gallstones but in your teeth, which usually makes it more difficult to perform root canal therapy if needed. The most common side effect of statins is muscle pain, soreness, or weakness, which can affect daily life, like chewing and breathing, if it's actually severe enough. If it's severe enough. And there are some studies that indicate hyperlipidemia may be associated with periodontal disease, but whether periodontitis causes an increase in plasma lipids, or whether hyperlipidemia is a risk factor for periodontal infection needs further research. All right, so that's it for this video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to this channel for much more on dentistry. If you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon page. And thank you to all of my patrons here for their support. You can unlock access to my video slides to take notes on, and tons of practice questions for the board exams. So go check that out, the link is in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video.